Hey guys, Devin with FishTankProjects.com and I'm just going to show you guys how to make a uh, DIY stir plate. It's pretty simple. Um, essentially what it is, is you have some magnets that spin around and they will magnetically connect to one of these stir bars and you can see as the motor spins on the side, it will spin the magnet. So you can have, say, a stir bar in your mixing container on top and it will stir it so you don't actually have anything inside touching it. Uh, one of the cheapest and easiest ways to do this is to use a computer fan. So this is a 120 mil computer fan. I cut off all the fan blades just to make it a little more aerodynamic, I guess, because there's no point pushing air in a sealed enclosure. Those are two rare earth neodymium magnets. Um, so I glued those. So I just made sure they're what they're flipped, so they're kind of opposing. And you, then you can see it's how strong the stir, stir bars stick to it. Um, another cheap or easy way is um, if you take apart a computer hard drive, there's magnets inside. And a lot of people use hard drive magnets. Um, I would just went with these just so they're balanced. Okay, now you got your computer fan. Uh, you get two magnets, neodymium magnets, or rare earth magnets, center it. Uh, you don't have to cut off the blades, I just did that for fun today. Just to make it spin a little easier. Um, I'm going to run it off a 9 volt battery. I made another one that plugs in, but I'm going to make this one a bit portable, so... 9 volt battery, this is just a battery clip. There are power leads. This is a computer fan controller. And an on and off switch, and of course an enclosure. So this one has a nice clear lid, so we'll be able to see everything. I am going to drill a hole in the side and put in a switch for my on and off. And I haven't decided if I'm going to mount this on the outside or mount on the inside. Just have a little nub, might be a bit of a pain to turn it, but we'll try it and see what happens. And so this will let me turn it up and turn it down. So I'll drill some holes and solder a few connections and there we go. So I got the hole drilled for my power switch, got that popped in, and I got my fan speed controller. However, the little nub barely, with the stock case, it barely stuck out, so it was hard to turn it. So I took it out of its case, and there's enough there that should be fine to turn it. So I'm just going to get this lined up and just kind of hot glue gun this in place, just to hold it. So I'll be able to turn the speed up and down from outside of the case. And once we get that, I'm going to solder it all together. Okay, so everything is wired up. It was a bit messy to mount it since that board or the plastic case didn't fit inside and give me room to move it. So it's a bit of a gob of glue to hold it at a bit of an angle so it pops out. But I can still turn it. It's a little stiffer, I think I got a bit of glue on the edge, but aside from that it works, which is the main thing. And I'm gonna turn it on, my magnet spin. And I can turn it down or crank it up. Control the speed. So, just for wiring purposes, I have a 9 volt battery. Um, positive goes to the switch, the other positive goes to power for the fan controller. Uh, the ground from the battery is straight to the board, and the output just goes to the fan. So, it's pretty simple. So, I'll pop it together and I'll show you how it works with a little container of water. Alright, there you go. Our magnetic stir is fully built, it's in its case. Uh, I got my power switch and my speed adjuster. Now the cool thing is, uh, you can get little sets of stir bars. And different sizes, you know, for bigger containers or not. It was probably only 20 bucks for the set off Amazon. Now, one of the cool things, you can use it for a test kit. So if you're testing water parameters, instead of shaking it for a while, just put a small stir bar inside and turn it on. And you can see how quick it actually mixes it up. So instead of sitting there and shaking it for a minute, like within seconds, like almost instantly it'll change color, which is pretty cool. Now if you're mixing calcium or alkalinity, let's do a bigger container. So this is about 800 mils. You can do about a liter, so about 20 ounces. Magnesium is my favorite because it's a pain to stir normally. And turn it on, the bigger stir bar. It's going to turn up the speed for this guy. And you can see the tornado. Oh, it's so I either didn't have it centered or I turned it up too much too quick. I'm gonna turn it down a bit and we'll try again. 
And we can see the little volcano or whirlpool building. So this mixes really well, really quick. So it's a great way for mixing up calcium, alkalinity, or magnesium. Because it you know, so they're stirring it for 10 minutes, so you can just slowly add your powder and it will mix, you know, within seconds or minutes on max. So yeah, great way for a DIY mixer. For some more pictures and info, check out the link below at fishtankprojects.com.